Welcome to our class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning a beautiful Chassidic discourse in the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called V'lakachtem Lachem. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on Moitzoi Shabbos, of Shabbos Parshish HaZinu, that year was the 13th day of the month of Tishrei, the yard site of the Rebbe Marash, and that was in the year of Tafshin Lamites, which is 46 years ago. The Rebbe went on to certify and edit this Hasidic discourse in honor of the holiday of Sukkot in the year Tafshin Nun, 35 years ago. So again, the Hasidic discourse is based on the verse in the Torah where it speaks about the holiday of Sukkot, and it says, V'lakachtem lachem v'yoyim harishayim. On the first day, you should take to yourself, referring to the idea of the lulav and the esrit. So the Medrash says, one second. What does the Torah say? You should take it on the first day. But the fact is, it's the 15th day of the month. So why does it say the first day? So the Medrash explains, and it says, because it's the first day that we start counting the new sins. Why is that? Because on Yom Kippur, Hashem forgave the Jewish people. And from Yom Kippur until Sukkot, everyone's busy doing mitzvot. This one's building a sukkah, and this one's dealing with his little Vanesrog. So comes the first day of, of, of Yom Tiv, of sukkah, Hashem says, whatever happened until now happened. But now we start the new accounting of, unfortunately, the sins that people do. So what do you see from here? That taking the four species um, on the 15th day of Tishrei, it's, it's basically also part of the beginning of the new cheshbon, the new, the, new, the, new, the new accounting. So therefore the question is, what's the connection between the new accounting of, of the sins with taking the four species? Also we have to understand what it says in the Medrash, that the Jewish people and the nations of the world come to our Hashem on Rosh Hashanah, and we don't know who's going to be successful. But when, what happens is, when the Jewish people go out from Hashem, and they have their lulav, and they have their esrogim, and then we know that the Israel in Nitzchayu, that the Jewish people are meritorious. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu instructs the Jewish people and tells them, you take the lulav of esrog. In other words, the mitzvah of the four species on, the Suk- on Sukkot actually comes in continuation of Rosh Hashanah. When that's the day that we're, we're being judged. So if that's the case, that since uh, taking a little of an asteroid is connected to Rosh Hashanah to prove that we were successful, so why do we say we should take it on the first day? In other words, the midst of the four species on that day, it's not, it, 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 technically it's connected um, to, the, to, to Rosh Hashanah. And, and we're saying we should take it on this day on the first, so it's not connected to Rosh Hashanah. And, 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 and so, so, so is it, you know, on one hand, it's obviously connected, so it should be the 15th, but nevertheless, we're saying what? It's considered the first day. The other thing we're going to understand this with an introduction by, no, by talking about the difference of the mitzvah of sukkah and the mitzvah of what? Of the four species. In other words, even though, as we know, both of them, the mitzvah of sukkah and the mitzvah of the four species are connected to unity, like well, we will soon explain more in depth. But nevertheless, there's a difference between these two types of unity of the sukkah and the lulav. Why is that? Because the unity of the sukkah is unity in its essence. And it's not like there's different parts you're putting together. There's one sukkah. Everyone goes into one sukkah. And as we know, that the whole Jewish people are able to sit in one sukkah. Why? Because sukkah is something which is beyond differences. Everyone can come in there. However, when it comes to the four species, no, you have a lulav and you have an esrig, you have a hadas and a rava, and from all the different four types, you, you create unity, you take it together. In other words, even though these four species are totally different from one extreme to the next, and like it says in the Medrash, that the four species of the lulav corresponds to the four different types of the Jewish people. In other words, like for example, the, the species of the esrog represents someone that has taste and smell. And we know taste is referring to learning Torah and smell is, is, is mitzvot up to the, up to the level of the, of the arava. It doesn't have not a taste, not a smell. And so different types of Jews that don't have any Torah mitzvahs, but nevertheless, all types become, come, come together in the little Vanessa. And even according to the opinion or the insight or the explanation, that the four species is not referring to the different types of the Jewish people, but it's referring to Hashem. <coughs> but so nevertheless, since these, I, these four levels 
of Hashem is, is corresponded in the four species. So obviously, there are four different levels. And like we know that when you have different insights into the, into the, same, the same verse, they're really connected. So you can say, Jeroba says, that, the, that the, the, the differences on high, which that's corresponded to the four species from different extremes, which are basically connected to the difference between the Jewish people have. So we always say our differences are sourced in Hashem. But by taking the, the four species, and as we know, it's really one mitzvah, we'll be unified, we unify the Jewish people down here, and we unify, obviously, the different levels on high. Now, so those are the two mitzvahs which connect to, to, to unity in different levels. After we have the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah, and taking the four species, so we know uh, we have the mitzvah of bringing s- sacrifices on the holiday, and the main sacrifice on the holiday of Sukkot is 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 is, is the seventy animals that were brought. And as we know, the reason why they brought the, the, that specific animal on ox is because that's the king of all the animals. Now, why did they bring seventy animals that corresponds to the seventy nations of the world by bringing the seventy animals as as as, uh, as a sacrifice? And today we don't have the temple, but we we say the 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 verses of the sacrifice sacrifices. Like we know that today the expressions of the Shalma Param so saying, "How do we bring the sacrifices today by praying?" So by bringing the sacrifices then, and by reciting the, the sacrifices in the prayers, what we do is we're actually transforming the nations of the world. And Rebbe says you can say that the connection between the idea of transforming the nations of the world by bringing the 70 sacrifices to the mitzvah of the four species, what's the connection? Because what's the ultimate purpose and what's the completion of the success of the Jewish people that gets revealed by taking the four species? You know, it's like we said that when the, when the Jewish people come out with the lulav and esra, we know that they're successful. So what's the whole idea? That the goal is that not only the Jewish people should realize it's all, it's all one, but even the nations of the world should agree to it. And when we bring the 70 sacrifices corresponding to the seven nations, they get transformed, they get refined, and then when they get transformed and refined, they agree to the success of the Jewish people. And this is also the connection that when we say Hallel on the seven days of Sukkot, connecting to the idea of the 70 sacrifices that are brought, in other words, even though we say the Hallel every single day, and, 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 but nevertheless the sacrifices are different, because when going ahead and transforming and refining that happens through the nations of the world by bringing the sacrifice, so what happens then is, we, like it says in Hal, Halu Hashem Golgoyim. All the nations of the world praise Hashem. Shabchu Kolomim. All the nations are are, are, are are praising Hashem. Why? Ki Gavar Aleinu Chazdei. Because Hashem has given so much chesed to the Jewish people that the nations of the world are praise Hashem. Why? Because Ki Gavar Aleinu Chazdei. So that's the connection between saying Hal and bringing the sacrifices that the nations of the world will praise Hashem for giving for, for, for giving um, the Jewish people all the chesed, all the kindness. Now, this that the nations of the world praise and thank Hashem that Kigavar Aleinu that 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 Hashem was very kind to the Jewish people. That's a very very profound idea. The Rebbe says why, and not only that. In a certain way, it's even higher than the chesed that Hashem did for the Jewish people. There's one thing Hashem did the chesed, and there's one thing that the nations of the world recognize it. Why? Because when they recognize it, what happens is we all know that Hashem had a tremendous desire. What was Hashem's desire? That he wanted, Nisada Kaddish Baruch, I'll say it in Hebrew, Hashem wanted to have a dwelling place where? In the lowest places, in a place that doesn't recognize God. And in the lowest places that's possible, in a place which rebels against God. And by them going ahead and acknowledging it, obviously the tachta in the lowest places are, are, are making a dwelling place for Hashem. And like it's understood from the Hasidic discourse, the, that starts with Baruch Ti and Mikola Amim, that you should be blessed from all the nations of the world, from the Baal Lula. So he says that he brings a powerful teaching from the Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi says as follows, if a non-Jew blesses you, say Amen. Why? It's a non-Jew's blessing. Why are you saying Amen? And and he says, because the verse says, Baruch Tiyem Amim. 
You should be blessed from all the nations, which means the nation should bless you. And he brings in that Hasidic discourse what the Arizal says, that when someone says Amin, Amin is the unification of the two powerful names of Hashem, Yudkei Vavkei and Adonai. Why? Because Amin numerically is um, 91, and Yudkei Vavkei and Adonai together is 91. So when you're saying when you're saying Amen, you're actually saying on a spirit. If you go deeper into it, you're saying two powerful names of Hashem. And why why, and why is that? Never explains very powerful. And he says like this: the name Yud Kei Vav Kei, That's the essential name of Hashem, which in, in Kabbalistic terminology is called Atzmus Oirein Saif, higher than the worlds. So Yud Kei Vav Kei is the most powerful name of Hashem. What's the name Adonai represent? Like like Chazal tell us, lecha no liquor Adonai. That for if for you it's befitting to call Adonai. Why? Because Adonai represents the idea that you are the the Adon. You're the master of everything that was created. In other words, so besides the fact that Adonai is connected more to the sphere of Malchut, the lowest sphere, and we know that Malchus it's the lowest. It means it's the source of everything that's created. So from, from this that Chazal tell us, that you are the master of everything that was created, that, so what, what does that mean? That Adonai is connected to the creations. And what type of creation? Someone is just a creation. Someone that's just a, a, a being. But when you unify these powerful levels, Yud Kei Vav Kei, which is the essence of Hashem, and Adonai, which is basically the lowest level way Hashem connected to the lowest part of the world, that means in the lowest level of Adonai, what, what's shining in there, Yud Kei Vav Kei? So then what happens is even the things that Hashem created from the level of Adonai, um, and even those simple people, so what happens is gets, what gets shined into them is Yud Kei Vav Kei, which is the essence of the infinite part of Hashem. And then you create a dear Eloi Yisbarech. You make a dwelling place for what? For the highest level. For the highest level. And that's why it says... If a non-Jew blesses you, say Amen. Why? Because you're unifying the highest part of Hashem, the lowest part. And as we know, the Jewish people are, abo- are we're above the, the, the limitations of the world. And when a non-Jew recognizes that he's blessing you, so then that becomes a preparation, an introduction for the greatest union of Yud Kei Bav Kei Nadinai, and to make a dear Eloi's birth and time to make a dwelling place for Hashem down in this world. Now, since the ultimate purpose why Hashem created us is we should make a dwelling place for Hashem down here. And how does that happen? It happens when we do our spiritual work and up to the point that the nations of the world are going to recognize us and bless us. So it's self-understood that Hashem gives every one of the Jewish people the power to accomplish this. And especially, Rebbe says, in the generations before the redemption, that we have a responsibility to finish and complete this dwelling. So obviously, Hashem gives us greater power to accomplish this mission. And Rebbe says, it's possible you can say this is the reason that um, the previous Rebbe said a powerful story. The story is that the Rebbe Maharash, um, uh, who was celebrating his yard site, that he would travel every day uh, during the week, he would go for a stroll. And once, for whatever reason, he had his normal route that he went, and he went in a different route. And all the people that saw him that don't normally see him, because he usually takes a different route, when they saw him, they prostrated themselves in front of them. So afterwards, they asked the Rebbe Marash, what's this all about? So he said, the Rebbe Marash said this powerful line, so on who do you think the verse says, Baruch Tia Mikola Amin, you're going to be blessed from the nations of the world. Now the Rebbe says, why did the, why did the, pre, why did the previous Rebbe tell us a story? And he wanted to publicize, publicize. So that is to give us the power to know that our job is to bring godliness into the world and nations of the world should bless us and we'll be able to create a union, we said by, by saying, Amin of, of the Yud Kei Bav Kei and Adonai. So it was besides the fact that, he, that he's giving us power and, and inspiration and encouragement um, by, the, by the story. But since this story happened to a, a Nasi, a leader of the Jewish people, and we know the leader is everything, so that gives every one of us the power. And, um, and the fact that it was, was revealed and it was publicized through, through the leader, 
So obviously it creates even more power and even more energy to accomplish our goal. And Rebbe says you can say that the, the, the uh, power and the energy that's given from on high to do our work, when do we get that power? On Chag Sukkot, on the holiday Sukkot. Why? Because what happens on the holiday Sukkot? Everybody knows, all the nation of the world knows, that the Jewish people are in its meritorious. And besides the fact that they know it, they actually agree to it. Up to the point they actually praise the Jewish people. Um, uh, and, and what do they praise the Jewish people? That govern Aleinu Chazdoi. We have tremendous chasm from Hashem. So that gives us the power um, that we should, uh, of, of doing the work of the Baruch Tia Mikola Am. We should be blessed from the nations of the world, not only on Sukkot, a whole year. So we get, this, we get the energy on Sukkot. But the goal is to give us energy for a whole year. You obviously know, like to add this idea, this idea of success. You know, as Yisrael in an this idea of, of success is that not just we're successful, but we're successful in overcoming the opposition. So what do you see from here? That the, rev- the revelation of Nitzachon, being successful in the holiday circles, is what, that even the nations of the world pr- praise us. In other words, we're talking about even those that were against us, and the ones that were and opposing us, the ones that are in the position, opposition, turn to, be, to, to, to love us. Now they love us, they praise us, and they praise Hashem for Hashem giving us the chesed. And therefore, the, the, the power that we get from Sukkot for, for, the, for, the, for the idea that we should be blessed from the nations of the world, and that happens a whole year, it applies even to those that were opposing us. Baruch Tia Mikala Am, we should be blessed from all the nations of the world, even those that are opposing us. So here we have the lesson for every one of the Jewish people. Now, even though there are times when you have certain oppositions and certain things that are stopping you from serving Hashem, you shouldn't get weakened because of it. And obviously, obviously, for sure, you shouldn't give up hope. And when you make a resolution that you're going to go ahead and fulfill your mission without getting distracted from anything that's blocking you or stopping you, what's going to happen is you're going to see in a revealed way that all the things that you thought were blocking you were nothing, 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 nothing. And on the contrary, the intent is, the intent of the things that were stopping you, why was it stopping you? It's to able to elevate you to a higher level. And as any time you have an opposition, and any time you have a struggle, and any time you have something that's stopping you, it's to create, you should go to a higher level. In other words, what does that mean? That you should not only have the avoid of transforming, but you should also have the avoid of the spiritual work of a test. Because if the fact is, if you wouldn't have any opposition, you wouldn't be able to, to overcome a test. And, and, the, and, and obviously we're not looking for tests. But on the other hand, when we have it, it takes you to the next level. And you're able to reach a very high level, up to the point that those that are opposing you will actually be transformed to helping you and blessing you. Like it says, Baruch Tia, you're going to be blessed me, Kala Amen, and again, even those that oppose you. And by, oh, by, by transforming them from being in the, in the opposition to being for you, you're going to fulfill and complete the intent that God had when he decided he wanted to create the world. He wanted to create a world in Tachtoin, in the lowest places, means where there's opposition, on the lowest places to be transformed to the positive. Now, in order to accomplish the transformation of the nations of the world, and especially those that are opposing us. How do we do that? That's we do it by awakening and revealing the yechida of our soul. We know there's five levels to the soul. When we bring out the deepest level, the yechida, that gives us the power. Why is that? Because since the sparks in the opposition, in the nations of the world, are totally concealed and totally hidden, so therefore, in order to transform those sparks, you have to go ahead and awaken a deep part of the soul which is deeper than revelation, which basically means you pull out your yechidah, the oneness of your soul. And literally, that when you awaken the yechidah from within yourself, you stand strong. So in other words, you should have the strength and the power to do what you need to do without thinking about opposition. And you do that by awakening your yechidah, and when you have this power, you will be successful to get rid of any opposition 
And not only that, but the opposition becomes your best friend and your best advocate. Now, even though this idea that the, op the opposition gets transformed in becoming helping you, that comes, how does it come? Because you reveal your yechida. But nevertheless, it's even much higher than the yechida itself. Why? Because when you reveal your yechida, nothing happened. What do you do? Fun, you reveal your yechida. But when you use your yechida to transform an opposition to a helper, which means it's going against its nature of the opposition, that's something new. That's something revolutionary. Besides the fact that through that you're actually fulfilling the idea of making a dwelling place for Hashem down here, and, and obviously in the lowest places. And the same thing also says applies when it comes to transforming the nations of the world. Like it says, Hallelujah Hashem Kal Goyim, that all the nations are going to praise Hashem on the holiday of Sukkot. And when, how does that happen? It happened by revealing the Yechida. Why is that? It never explains like this. Because what is the general work of the 10 days of Truva? The whole, how does a person work in the 10 days of Truva? You're, you're bringing out the depth of your heart. Like it says, Mimamakim, from the depths I call Hashem. And it says, Mimamakim, plural, double depths. What's the two double depths? Two depths. It's referring to the depths of, of the Neshama of Chaya and Yechida. And especially in Rosh Hashanah, which is basically the beginning of the 10 days of Truva. And how much more so in Yom Kippur? And, 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 and as we know that and, and, and the, and the, the 10 days of Truva is a time to return to Hashem. And it's a time that Hashem basically forgives us. And so, and this work that Hashem should forgive us comes from the idea of our Yechida in all three aspects of world, which, which is space, um, a, a, a time, and soul. And the revelation of this Achas, this Yechida, which comes out in the 10 days of Truva. And especially in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, so when does that, you know, in Rosh Hashanah, we, that's when we do, that's when we do the work of the Yechidah. But when does it get revealed? When does the Yechidah come out in the open? It comes out in the open in the holiday Sukkot. And like we know, the, the insight into the verse where it says, Bakesal Yom Chagenu. What does that mean? That all the ideas that in the 10 days of Truva are Bakesal, they're concealed, they get revealed in the holiday of Sukkot. And that's why the work is on the ten days of Shuvah is, is, is because it's because it's it's an in depth work, it's concealed work. That's why the avoid of the ten days of Shuvah is by, by people cry. It's, it's it's internal work up to the point. Rabbi says of something very very powerful from the Zohar that somebody that does not cry on the ten days of Shuvah, your soul is not complete because by crying you're bringing out the Chai and Yechida. So that this crying is the ten days of Shuvah. What happens? Come to Sukkot. That's the time to be joyful and happy. Because joy is when something gets revealed. And on, on the, on, once you come to Sukkot, your Yechida gets revealed. And when a person's happy, you add in the revelation. Because the fact is, the nature of being happy is to take something that's concealed and reveal it. Up to the point that it breaks all boundaries. Now, by revealing the, 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 the oneness of the Chai Yechida in the, in, in the holiday of Sukkot, there's two levels. How do you know the first level of revealing your Chayachid is by sitting in the sukkah? Because the sukkah we said is one. All the Jewish people can sit in one sukkah. And, and so this revelation is makif because the sukkah hovers over, over you. And by put, taking the four species, so this oneness gets reveal, revealed in an internal way. And let's explain elsewhere the details of the way it gets revealed. So I would like to connect this. What we explained before, that the unity of the sukkah is really, it's, it's unity in its essence. And, it was, and to begin with, there's no, opposite, there's no different parts. However, when it comes to the unity of the four species, it was, even those different, different parts, but nevertheless, they unify. Why is that? And there's something very powerful, because they, to, to, in, in, internalization, premiums, is divided. And therefore, the unity of the sukkah that doesn't have... Any, any any divisions, so that's why it's makif. But but the unification of the four species, which is referring to the four different types of the Jewish people, and the four and the four different types within each person, so that gets um, in, 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 internalized in a premius and internal way. And by going ahead and revealing in a revealed way the unity of the of the different d details of the Jewish people. In other words, the, the different types of the Jewish people and the different levels in the Jewish people. So what happens is, we, we gets drawn, how do we make that happen? By taking the four, the, the, the four species, something else happens. It knows that what, what get, what, through that unity, what gets revealed, that the Jewish people are successful. 
and in a way that the nations of the world agree to it. And up to the point they praise the Jewish people. And they praise them that what? That, that, that the chesed of Hashem is there. And why is that? Never explain something very powerful. It says like this. Multiplicity is found in its nature by the nations of the world. By the Jewish people, we're one. Because besides the fact that we're, we're from the minority, we're the smallest nation in the world. And we're one Jewish people among 70 nations. So there's 70 and we're one. So that's in general. More importantly, the Jewish people were, were, were one people, Kaimachas. And the idea of multiplicity is mainly in the nations of the world. Now, this fact that the Jewish people by nature are one, because our source is in Hashem. And we know we say in Shema, Hashem Echad, Hashem is one. But since our source is in Hashem Echad, therefore we want, we're one. So what do we see from here? That the unity of the Jewish people, besides the fact that we're not, we're not, we're not divided, like the nations of the world. But we're even higher. We're even higher than higher than the division in the of the of the angels and the division of the worlds, because we know the world was created from Shem Elohim. Elohim is plural. And now that we're higher even than, than, than the name Elohim, because Elohim is plural. And which which in general, what is that referring to? The light that fills the world. And fill is different things. You know, it fills at different levels in the world and every single person based on, based on who the person is. But nevertheless, so in essence, we're really one. But, there was, but nevertheless, since by the Jewish people, unfortunately, we have multiplicity. And again, there was, it's only externally. Internally, we're really one. But externally, we have differences. But by going ahead and drawing in the unity and the oneness into the Jewish people, where we're, 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 we're not one in the external part, so what happens is by bringing the unity within us, in our external self, we bring in the unity into the name of Lokim, and also into the worlds, and even into, in, and also into, into, the, in, into, the wor- into, into the world, which the materialistic world. Like we know it says, Hashem. Look how many different actions of Hashem, which means there's so many different things. And that's where the materialistic world, and also into, into, into the nations of the world. So I'm saying you can say that this is the connection between the two insides of the four species. Because according to one insight, it's referring to the two, four different levels of the Jewish people. And the other insight we learned in the beginning was it's four different levels on, on high. In other words, the four different levels on high is the idea that the, the light of Imali Kalalman, which basically the light that fills the world, it fills the world of four different worlds. There's Atzilus, Bria, Yetzira, Asiya, and that the, the light gives every world what it needs. But by going ahead and bringing a unity in the multiplicity, and there's the four different types of the Jewish people and the four different levels of Jewish people, so we start by bringing the unity within us, we, we, we go ahead and draw in the, the, the unity into the four, into Ayurhamali, in the four different levels of the world, and even in the even in the levels of Batsilis Bria Asiya, and then obviously and also then into all the nations of the world. So based on this, Rebbe explains beautifully, and he says, now understand why by taking the four species, we affect that even the nations of the world will agree to the success of the Jewish people, and they're gonna praise us. And like we said, that by them praising us, it's higher than the success itself. The success itself is amazing. But the fact that they're praising us is even higher. Why? Because this of the nations of the world, and especially those that were opposing us, and we have to be successful, they go ahead and praise us, and we praise the fact that we have chesed Hashem. That's revolutionary. Like we explained before at length. In other words, and besides the fact that it fulfills the mission of creating a dwelling place in the lowest places, and literally the lowest places, now even though this idea of the nations become accepting of the Jewish people, when is that ultimately going to happen? When Mashiach comes, in the future. Like it says in the prophet of Zechariah, that every single one of the Jewish people are going to have, listen to this, interesting, 2,800 servants of the nations of the world that are going to hold on to the four corners of, of, of our talus. And, but but so even though that's going to happen in the future, but Rebbe says we do have a taste of it in the time of exile, and especially in a time now before Mashiach's coming. And that's why the verse says you should take on the first day 
Why the first? Because the first of, of, account, of the accounting, in other words, even though the, the, this idea of, of revealing the success of the Jewish people through taking the four species, which is which, which basically revealing what happened in Rosh Hashanah, and taking the four species on, on Sukkot is connected to the fact that Rosh Hashanah means technically it's the 14th. So why are we saying the first? The, the, the first? But the fact is, by, by taking the four species, we affect what do we affect that the nations will agree to the success of the Jewish people and they're going to pray, praise them. That is something revolutionary and that is new, new. And that's why he says, Well, on the first day because it's a Risha in the Cheshbon, it's a Risha, it's the first for this revolutionary idea that the nations of the world are going to acknowledge that the Jewish people are successful in creating the real Risha and the real oneness. So, based on the services, he'd like to say, um. This is what Chazal say, that in, in merit of the three firsts, what are the three firsts? Uh, resting on the first day of Pesach, resting on the first day of, of Sukkot, and taking the Lul of an Esrug. So we merit it for the three, for the three firsts. One is to eradicate the, the descendants of Esau. Secondly, to the building of the temple. And for the name of the Messiah. And we know that the, 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 the level of, um, of, of the first of basically the four species, it's even higher than the first of Sukkot. Why? Since the idea of taking the four species means you're bringing in the idea of makif of Sukkot into an internal way, so how is that it's greater than Sukkot? Why is it, why is it greater? And never explains very powerful. Because when a person does the four species, what we do is we actually complete the intent that Hashem had of making a dwelling place down here. And therefore, because we're accomplishing something so powerful, that's why the reward is going to be the revelation of the essence of Hashem. And whoever finishes off says something very beautiful and powerful. It should be the will of Hashem. That from this time of, of celebration and happiness of Sukkot, we're taking usmach them, we have to be happy. We should come very, very soon to the great joy the, the, the everlasting joy, which is going to be with the true and complete redemption through Mashiach, Mashiach Tzidkenu, he should come and redeem us and take us standing upright to Eretz, Eretz Yisrael and should happen b'mheira um, b'yameinu mamash very, very quickly in our days in a literal way. So here we have a very, very powerful Hasidic discourse in the Rebbe about the holiday Sukkot, on the different levels of unity, and the ultimate unity that we accomplish by not only that we're unified, but the nations of the world recognize the unity, and that will ultimately bring the greatest unity, like the Rebbe says, with the coming of Mashiach. So let's hope and pray the unity happens, and God willing, our next class will be in Yerushalayim, Yerakodesh. Have a great and blessed week. Chag Sameach.